afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Trend Talks. Um, today, I have the pleasure to talk to Frank Minor, he's general manager in Europe for Dinko Solar. Frank has over 15 years of experience in the solar industry, and he worked in management roles in several international companies like Conergy, BP Solar, LDK, and now at Jinko. Welcome, Frank. Hey, hi, well, hi, Gatwin. Good, Frank. Um, let's talk about modules, since Jinko is a well-known module manufacturer. Um, looking at the current crisis, um, what do you think is, what do you see as the impact of this crisis on the solar module supply chain? Um, yeah, Edwin, that's, that's a good question. I think in general, we saw the crisis rather having a temporary impact. Um, uh, of course, first, the beginning of this year, I was personally actually in China at that time, as to remember, of course, it hit the, uh, the production uh, part first, wafer cells, module production, and um, it was simply physically not possible to produce any more modules, which had an impact on the supply side um, uh, than here in, 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 in other markets, um, uh, so because the factories were simply shut down. But I think China managed to control um, the situation pretty quickly and restart um, uh, ramping up the production capacities in China. And then Unfortunately, um, uh, shortly after, the, the demand side was heavily impacted in all regions of the world, one after another. So um, modules started to be produced again and to be shipped again. And then all of a sudden, it was not possible to install, to receive and install those modules in, uh, in some country markets uh, any longer. So um, uh, first supply side, then demand side, certainly it had an impact and it's, it's still, we are still recovering from the impact um, on the demand side now in, in, in the European market, but in other regions as well, where some project installations got delayed. But I would say overall, uh, we are now quickly recovering um, uh, from, from the COVID-19 impact. Um, uh, there is still certain delays in project installations and there is still certain hesitations. Um, uh, but overall, I think business will get back to normal uh, pretty soon. We are going a good path yeah. here and we are very positive as well about the, the outlook um, because our industry in my opinion, is less heavily uh, affected um, compared to many other industries like automotive, tourism, et cetera. Yeah, and, and is, is there also any impact on the pricing of modules? And do you foresee that it has any impact in the near future? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Um, if you want to look at it from a, from a positive side as an investor, um, not that much as a module manufacturer, but as an investor, I think this this crisis even positively impacted as a kind of uh, a trigger um, uh, this overcapacity of 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 modules um, uh, all of a sudden led to a very significant drop in market price level all of a sudden um, as i said factories started production again but there was not uh, that the demand would partly got cancelled and that led to overcapacity in the market which led to a very significant drop in uh, module price levels uh, i would say you know, 15 20 percent um, price drop since wow. beginning of this year and and that is now acting as a as a stimulator again looking into the future um, it hurts us on the module supply side for sure and might even lead to some uh, consolidation amongst the module manufacturers but in terms of economic viability of the projects in, in terms of IRR expectations it's having a very positive impact and it's acting like a, a catalyst and, uh, and trigger um, to even more demand stimulation for the years to come. Uh, would that mean that this price, this lower price is going to uh, remain and stay in the market or do you see uh, it going up? So is there an urgency for investors to invest now in the modules because otherwise they will be too late or how do you see well, that? Well, yeah. Okay. So we see the 
module price level that has been uh, reached now during this year is certainly the bottom line for this year. Um, uh, we expect an extremely strong Q4, um, uh, which is mainly driven by a super strong demand to be expected from China. Uh, we think it's realistic um, to see um, a total installation volume of 25, even up to 30 gigawatt during the second half of this year only uh, from China. Um, so, so most likely Q4 will become the hottest quarter we have ever seen in, in this industry. And we are already preparing for some uh, constraints on the supply side, which, which will then lead also to a stabilization of price level, or we might even see a a small pickup in prices during the coming months. So at the moment, if you ask me from a buyer's point of view, we think, uh, yeah, that, that's the bottom line for this year. Um, for the rest of the year, it can only get higher. Looking into next year, of course, that's a different story. We see then capacities being ramped up further. Um, and um, uh, in the long run, the price trend is clear. But at least for the coming months, um, we think it will not go too much more lower. Okay, talking about the modules, uh, one more topic I wanted to discuss with you is the trend of modules becoming um, bigger and increasing in power. Um, and you see more and more new modules come, model types coming on you know, in the market uh, nowadays, which, um, yeah, where does this end? Uh, how, how much more capacity can you put into a mo module? Uh, what wattage uh, can you can you build modules and and how is this going to impact the BOS and O and M of of solar projects? Mm. <laughs> yes, you're right. Um, it's a pretty amazing development that the whole industry has experienced during the last let's say 12 to 18 months on the technology side if you look back still a couple of years you had this standard 60 72 cell poly module which was over 90 percent of the market and um, since then wow so much has has happened or we saw this shift from poly to mono uh, then there was the big perk trend um, uh, and, and and meanwhile the biggest part of the global production capacity is is based on perk mono and um, then we have the recent trend of um, modules becoming bigger and bigger as you just said um, uh, jinko actually kicked off this trend by introducing our our cheetah technology based on 158 millimeter uh, wafer sizes which allowed us to take the 400 watt peak threshold um, but and that's only one, one and a half years ago. And uh, meanwhile, what has happened is even more exciting. I mean, we see now uh, the jump from 400 watt peak, not only to 450, but even 500 watt peak modules. Um, uh, we see uh, the bifacial trend, uh, which is becoming very significant. Uh, we also see new technologies being applied, like tiling ribbon, N-type technologies is, is having a a, a very positive uh, outlook in the future. So it's it's a broad diversification and technology innovation which is happening and which the industry can only benefit from. It helps somehow the module manufacturers to, to slightly uh, differentiate from, from their peers, um, but it certainly helps as well to, um, you know, uh, offer a, a, a a new competition level on the efficiency side, on the power output side. And that in combination with lower and lower prices um, of the modules, of course, has a very positive uh, impact on LCOEs, uh, on, on OEM costs, on IRRs. Just this, as you said, the sheer size of the power output of the module um, uh, in combination with bifacial is driving down um, the um, the the, the investment and the, the O&M costs as well, very significantly. And yes, uh, right. but if, if you, if I may interrupt, because if you, the, there, besides the benefit, that could also be a downside if you look at it like um, with more and more variety in types of modules, the standardization looks far, far further away than ever before. And if you like, if you're an investor and you're an owner, as an owner of power of PV plants, and you have to replace modules, then suddenly, all the modules have turned into new uh, new mod uh, and, and, and 
new efficiencies, and you still have to combine that with your old, old uh, plant. Um, yes. It's going to make life hard for the asset owner, is it? Yeah. Um, it's more of a challenge than it used to be. That's clear. Uh, when every module was was the same uh, kind of commodity, however, um, we still see. You know, there was this 400 watt peak threshold, and here we had um, pretty quickly most of our peers followed um, that new market standard, and then we had this interim step um, of 400 between 430 and 450, and here we saw many different type of modules in the market, but now with the new era of 500 watt peak modules, we I, I wouldn't want to say we are getting back to standardization, but at least in terms of module dimensions, um, we see um, a certain standard developing uh, again amongst uh, all our peers who at least offer the same kind of module dimensions. What is happening within the module, I think that's actually the rather the technology innovation uh, potential. Um, you are right, the EPCs and the investors, they need to have a comparable module size, module dimension, um, uh, also for their procurement exercises for big tenders. Um, but the interesting part is really um, how can cell uh, wafer uh, technologies be combined within the module to further increase the efficiency without further oversizing the module size. Uh, Frank, we had the seven and eight minutes are already passed, so we have to finish. Uh, one last question. <laughs> yeah. um, what kind of, a, what is for you a question that is still uh, out there uh, with respect to this crisis? Is there any question that you would like to have answered? I mean, for, for, for me personally, um, as I said, in general, we are all pretty positive looking into um, the the future because, uh, as I said, with costs coming down further, with efficiencies going up uh, more, this only has a positive impact on the um, economic viability of projects. Um, our big question mark right now is what will be um, the impact of the current economic crisis on the electricity market? because um, of course at the moment it's not possible to sign mer merchant projects uh, or PPAs uh, the same like it, it was still let's say end of last year. So, so we are carefully watching the development of the electricity price level as well um, by when will the electricity prices come up again to allow um, um, merchant projects and, uh, because that's finally the key driver for, for our whole industry. Um, to become independent from subsidies and to really see merchant projects and EPAs driving the market. Yeah. Well, that's a very interesting question. I uh, hope we can discuss that with some other people uh, during these trend talks as well. Uh, in the meantime, thank you very much for this interview, uh, Frank, and I wish you all the best in the business in the coming period. Thank you very much, Edwin, to you. Have a good day. Take care.